Hey guys, my name is Lakshmi and you're watching RevShipper. Today, I'll be sharing my physics Olympiad journey, some important chapters, and some hacks which I used in my preparation. Let's get right into it. So, physics Olympiads. Let's first start with my journey, something about me for credibility. So, I started in class 10th. Everyone around me was preparing for NTSE, uh, but I knew I was really bad at social studies, so I didn't prepare for it. And I prepared for NSEP and RMO, but unfortunately I couldn't even wear RMO. I given NSEP from Uttar Pradesh. So apparently Uttar Pradesh is a very big state. It has a lot of seats and very little competition. If I remember correctly, my score was around 130 and the cutoff was around 115 at that time and UP had around 50 seats. So I somehow got through. Next, class 11th. I gave NACP again in class 11 but this time I gave it from Delhi. Now I would re later realize that it was a very big mistake. I was taking a very big risk. See, Delhi is a very small state. It has very little seats and the cutoff is usually MI. That year the cutoff was around 165 and my score was exactly equal to the cutoff. So I barely managed to get through. Unlike class 10, this time I prepared hard for INPHO. So I sat for it prepared hard and managed to get through. The same year I got a call from APHO saying that I have been selected to represent India in APHO 20. It was held in Australia. I went there and won a bronze medal. After that, I went to the OCSC of physics, but unfortunately I couldn't get into the team. I gave class, I gave NACP again in class 12th, this time from Rajasthan. Rajasthan is a big state but has a lot of competition because most of the coaching institutes are there in Rajasthan. Next I gave INPHO uh, but I couldn't give anything else because everything got cancelled due to COVID. Something new that happened this year was an Olympiad called Online Physics Olympiad. This was a team based competition. Uh, where teams all over the world participated in it. It was a good competition and our team came first in the high school category in the world. So we won a gold medal. So this was about me. Now let's discuss the discuss about the physics Olympiads. So I won't be going into the details of how you register for the exams and what are the selection procedures and all that you can find somewhere else. I will be telling you about my preparation strategy and some hacks that I used. So basically NCP is a two hour objective exam which has a lot of problems. So naturally speed and accuracy matter the most. What I realized after giving NCP several times was that your depth in the subject doesn't really matter. What matters is your syllabus completion. The more the number of topics you have done and memorize the formulae, the more likely you are to score good in NSEP. So focus on syllabus completion. The resources I used were HC Varma mainly for syllabus completion and I practiced some previous year papers to check my preparation level. So the key point I want to mention here is that your center of NSEP matters more than your level of preparation. What this means is that there are several states, some big, some small, and every state has different number of seats and correspondingly every state has different, a different cutoff. So an obvious advice would be try to sit for the exam from a state which has a lot of seats and usually has a low cutoff. Avoid states like Delhi. Rajasthan, Andhra Pradesh, etc. You can find these data in the IAPT website. So, this is a very important point. 
because in some states the cutoff is usually the MI like Delhi, which is the maximum possible cutoff you can have. So find states like UP and sit for NCP there because you aren't restricted that from where you can sit for NCP. You can register it uh, for it from outside your school also. Next, INTHO. INTHO is a three-hour sub, uh, subjective exam which consists of six to ten problems. Questions are lengthy and have a lot of subparts. Of subparts, but they are not hard. They are mostly lengthy. You will find that out of hundred percent of the problem, ten percent is the physics part. And rest 90% is maths. What exactly in maths? Algebra and calculus. So, for example, there could be a very big 10 mark problem, which the entire physics the problem uses would be F equals dp dt. Rest, this, is, this would be the only physics you would require to solve the problem. Rest would be mathematical calculations. So, don't shy away from problems that are mathematically heavy. That's all I would like to say here. PYQs are indispensable. I cannot stress this enough. See, the people who set the INPHO papers, apparently they aren't very creative. So, you'll find that there is a lot of repetition in problems. In fact, there is a thermodynamics problem that has been repeated three times until now. So, if you do all the papers from, I believe, 1998 to 2021, there would be very little surprises when you sit for the exam the next time. And yeah, do all these papers because problems are often repeated or sometimes they are not exactly repeated, but the concept is same and it is slightly modified. And something else I would like to say is that INPHO papers have a very predictable format. After giving a few papers, you'll realize that the format is something like this. There are one or two mechanics problems, one usually one thermodynamics problem, and one or two problems of electricity and magnetism, which mainly consists of electrostatics or EMI. This is the usual scenario. The rest of the problems may be from optics, modern physics, etc. The mechanics problems also are usually very specific. They usually ask center of mass collisions or uh, rotation problems. Sometimes they also ask SHM problems. Thermodynamics is the most predictable of all these. They usually give you a thermodynamic cycle. There is a system which is performing a certain cycle. And you are required to calculate the changes in the state, variables like delta u, delta s, etc. So, make sure you get a lot of practice in these type of problems. Electrostatics and EMI, they ask very standard problems, J level problems. Now, let's discuss about some of the practice sources which I used. Let's start with mechanics. So, I started with Irodov. When I was sufficiently comfortable with most of the problems in Erodov, I moved to Krotov. I didn't solve all of these problems, but I used to solve them sometimes for a change. Then I focused most of my attention to Pathfinder. Pathfinder is a great book once you have your basics down. It consists of problems from basic NSEP level to beyond IPHU level. So it's a great book. I did not complete the entire book. But I had completed most of the mechanics part. Next, we have thermodynamics. Thermodynamics, don't skip thermodynamics for INPHU. The problems are very easy and they can be done if you have some basic practice. So, complete Erodov of thermodynamics. You don't need to do the kinetic theory part, but do the cycle problems, cycle as in the thermodynamic cycle. For more such problems, you can refer to this book by Jung Kuolim. You can easily find the PDF online. You don't need to do the entire book. But after doing a few INPHO papers, you will realize 
the type of problems that are relevant from this book. So do this only after you have done Erudo and have still have time left. Next, electricity and magnetism. Straightforward, do Erudo and try Pathfinder. For optics, I didn't find any good resource, but anyway, the best one I found was this book called Anurag Mishra. Uh, it has a lot of previous year problems from INTHO and also has similar problems. So, uh, make sure you do the solve problems, problems and uh, the subjective exercises. Next to have modern physics. Modern physics they ask very basic problems. So, in my opinion, HC Varma is sufficient. If you have still time left, you can try some IPHO, APHO papers. They are really helpful. They are usually at a higher level than INPHO papers. But if you can solve these easily, then IPHO would be a walk in the park for you. So, next. Are you overwhelmed by all this? You may be, but don't be. Because, first, I didn't do all this overnight. It took me two years to complete all these resources. In fact, I haven't completed all these resources. I practiced some portions, some problems from some portions. So, don't worry too much. And, have fun. That's the main point of preparing for Olympiads because if you don't have fun, then there is no point of attempting Olympiads because there is no direct benefit of doing the Olympiads. In fact, if you are preparing for JE, they might be distracting at times. So, if you are not having fun, then forget Olympiads. Some tips, problem solving tips I would like to give. Spend time on problems. By time, I mean a lot of time. For example, there used to be days when I used to spend 2-3 days on a single problem and still couldn't solve it. Then I looked at the solution. So, the more the time you spend, the more likely you will be to remember the solution once you read it. Next, enjoy the process. It gets addictive later. Let me explain how. See, you put in effort you solve a problem. You put in more effort, you solve another problem. After you solve a problem, you feel good. When you feel good, you put in even more effort and you solve more problems. This cycle continues and you sort of get addicted to the process. And this is a very great addiction to have, trust me. So, don't worry, after you reach a certain threshold of skill, people would have to stop you from solving Olympiad level problems because it's a fun process. If you want to know more about the mindset that goes into Olympiad preparation, I highly recommend the an answer I've written on Quora on this. I'll leave a link in the description. Thanks for watching. If you found it helpful, don't like the video. Tell me in the comments below why you liked it and why you disliked it if you did. And of course, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.